In this video, I'll be introducing nth roots. We're all pretty familiar with square roots, but we're going to look at higher order roots as well. The square root of a number is a value that when multiplied by itself is equal to the original number. Every positive number has it exactly two square roots. For example, the square root of 25 is positive 5 because positive 5 times positive 5 is 25. But the square root of 25 is also negative 5 because negative 5 times negative 5 also gives us positive 25. The positive square root is called the principal square root. We will be using the principal square root until we get to solving radical equations later on. We can talk about radical expressions in general, the nth root of a. What's underneath the radical is the radicand. That could be a number or possibly variables or even both. And then the little number kind of in the crook of our radical is the index. If no index appears, then the index is understood to be 2 since square root is the most common root. So let's talk about some of the rules of these higher order roots. If a, our radicand, is greater than or equal to 0, then the nth root of a to the n is equal to just a. Essentially, what's happening is the index and the power cancel each other out, leaving us with whatever's underneath. And you could either have the exponent on the inside or the outside, and it has the same effect. This is true if your radicand is greater than or equal to zero. If your radicand is less than zero, a negative number, that's where we have to be more careful. So if a is less than zero and n is an odd number, then it's true that our radical and our exponent are going to cancel out and leave us with whatever the number is underneath of the radical. However, if a is less than zero, a negative number, and our index is even, then the nth root of a to the n is not a real number. The square and the square root, for example, are not going to cancel out and leave us with just the radicand if that radicand is negative. So to summarize, a negative radicand under an even index is not a real number. Everything else is okay. We'll be able to figure out what the answer is as long as it's not a negative number under an even index. A positive radicand under any index can be found. Let's see how we would use these rules. I want to find the cube root of 125. So what we're doing is asking ourselves, well, what number raised to the third power is equal to 125? 5. Therefore, the cube root of 125 is 5. I had a positive radicand, so I knew I was going to get the answer. In our next example, the cube root of negative 8. Notice I have a negative radicand. Now I need to check the index. If the index is even, it's not going to be a real number. But if our index is odd, I should be able to find an answer. So our index is 3, which is an odd number. We should be able to come up with an answer. So what number raised to the third power gives us negative 8? Well, negative 2 to the third power is equal to negative 8. Therefore, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. 
And just to see how this is a direct application of those properties we talked about just a second ago, I'm going to rewrite this. We can rewrite this as the cube root of negative 2 to the third, because we just stated that negative 8 was the same as negative 2 to the third. So we see that these cancel out, and we're left with an answer of just negative 2. But honestly, I don't ever do it as I just did with the green. I always do it how I did it with the, the blue. Next, we want to find the fourth root of negative 81. I got a negative radicand, so that kind of puts me on alert. I need to turn my attention to the index. This time, my index is 4, which is an even number. A negative radicand with an even index this is not a real number. Let me explain a little further why we end up getting that type of answer. So if we go back to our same thought process of what number raised to the fourth power equals negative 81. Think about your even odd rule. If you take a positive number and raise it to the fourth power, you're always going to get a positive number. And if you take a negative number and raise it to the fourth power, you're always going to get a positive number. So there's no way, there's no type of number that you can raise to the fourth power, or any even power for that matter, that would produce a negative number. That's why this will not be a real number. Now we have negative square root of 4 25ths. Notice the placement of the negative. The negative is outside of the radical. So that negative is just coming straight down. And we'll have a negative on the outside of our answer. Now we want to look at the square root of 4 25 What number, when raised to the second power, equals 4 25ths? You can actually look at the numerator and the denominator separately. So what number raised to the second power gives us 4? 2. And then what number raised to the second power gives us 25? 5. So I know that my answer is going to end up being, bringing the negative down from out in front, negative 2 fifths. Our next two examples I wrote more in our property form. We have the seventh root of 11 raised to the seventh power. You want to look at the number inside of the parentheses. That's your radicand. That's what we need to look at and think about. Is it positive or is it negative? Our 11 is positive. A positive radicand can always be done. Anytime the index and the exponent match, they just cancel right out and this is going to be equal to 11. Lastly, we have the sixth root of negative 5 raised to the sixth. So I'm looking at the number inside the parentheses. The number is negative. We have to be careful when the number underneath is negative. If our index is even, this is not going to yield a real number. I look at my index. My index is 6, which is even, so that radical and exponent, they're not going to cancel out. This is not a real number.